Okay, here we're going to start talking about entropy. Okay, and we're going to stem back to that Clausius inequality equation uh, that we ended the, the previous with. Okay, and uh, that Clausius inequality only depends on the state ends. That is the 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 before and after the process occurs. Okay, so where you know the state is before, where the state is after. Okay. And because it only depends on that, it has to be a property. Okay, it has to be a change in property. And we're going to call that property entropy. So that change in entropy is nothing more than, again, Q over T, right? And again, this only depends on those end states. So therefore, it is a property. Okay, now entropy has units then of basically, uh, we've got energy over temperature so kilojoules per kelvin or btus per degree rankin okay now here's the key point entropy has no real physical meaning okay the, the equation actually defines entropy rather than hey we discovered this property called entropy how can i figure out how it relates to everything else right so don't spend a lot of time thinking about the physical meaning of entropy we don't stick an entropy meter in uh, to find the entropy the entropy exists to solve the equation. The equation defines what entropy is as opposed to having entropy and then uh, finding an equation that relates it. Okay, So don't spend a lot of time trying to find meaning and it. it doesn't really have any. It just solves the equation that we have. Okay, Again, we're only concerned with the change in entropy right? before and after the process. Okay, So we don't really need to find absolute entropy, so we just use an arbitrary reference state, just like we do with like the temperature uh, zero degrees Celsius, right, as a freezing point of water. We also did this with energy, right, we arbitrarily chose some points. So the same thing happens with entropy. So, um, And what we have here, this, this Clausius inequality, right, we refer to this as the entropy of trans entropy transfer that accompanies heat transfer, right? If I have Q that occurs at a certain temperature, right? There's some entropy transfer that occurs with that. And that's really what we've defined here uh, through the Clausius inequalities and entropy transfer that accompanies that heat transfer, okay? So if there's no heat transfer, i.e. it's adiabatic, and I have a reversible process, like how the equation is defined up here, right? Then the entropy is constant, right? S2 minus S1 is zero if uh, it's adiabatic, right? And if it's a reversible process, okay, which if you remember, if we go back to that Clausius inequality, we have that sigma, if that sigma equals zero, right, then I have an what we call an isentropic process. A constant entropy process is when I have adiabatic reversible process. Again, isentropic. Okay, and we're going to talk much more about that uh, later. Okay, now let's define a few equations that we have that relate uh, the entropy to other values that we have. So here's my first law equation, right? Q is uh, U uh, plus W. Okay, that's my first law equation, right? Now, plugging in what I know, right, from this equation over here, right, where basically dQ actually equals T times dS, right? Temperature times the change in S. Okay, and I also put in what I know about W as PdV. We've talked about that many times before. So here's a, an equation that relates U to uh S, right? And we call this one of our TDS equations, where TDS equals DU plus PDV, okay? Now, doing the same thing with H, remember, H is U plus PV, right? So DH is DU plus DPV, right? So I have to take, through the, the product rule, I have VDP plus PDV, right? So derivative of each of those variables then added together, right? Okay, so plugging what I know about H in, okay, um, rearranging things, uh, that is, in this equation, get du equals dh minus vdp minus, right, and then I'll take this du, plug it back into the above TDS equation, and basically PDV cancels out, okay, and I get TDS equals dh minus vdp. So, I have one equation that relates entropy to energy and one that relates entropy to enthalpy, okay? And these are just kind of defining equations. We don't use them directly, but they help us 
figure out relationships and, and come up with other equations. Now, one of the key things that we have with entropy is what we call our TS diagram. And this is temp temperature versus um, entropy. Now, based on this equation, right, if I take the integral of this, right, TDS, that equals the, the energy, right? Because delta Q is TDS. So I can find the heat as the area under a TS curve. So if you see a TS curve, you, you can find the, the heat transfer by the energy underneath it based on this TDS equation that we have above. Okay, now this takes us back to our Carnot corollaries, our Carnot cycles, right? where we flip-flop between adiabatic processes and isothermal process. Now, again, if I have an adiabatic process that's perfectly reversible, which all Carnot cycles are, I have isentropic processes. And that's what I have 1 to 2 and 3 to 4 here, right, where I have a vertical line on my TS um, diagram, okay? And then temperature is constant 2, 3, and 1, or 4, 1, so I have a horizontal line for that constant temperature. So my Carnot cycle essentially makes a rectangle on the, the TS diagram. Okay, so that's just another way to visualize things. Again, these isentropic processes are adiabatic reversible processes. So my entropy is constant uh, during those processes, during those adiabatic processes. Now, where do I get this entropy data from? Well, I get it from the tables, just like U and H. So if I've got water refrigerants, I've got a column there for S. I can look it up just like I looked those other ones up. Okay. If I have an incompressible substance, like liquid or a solid, right? I take my TDS equation that I just had up there where it's DU plus PDV. Okay. If it's incompressible, DV goes to zero. So throw that out. And you'll remember in our discussion for specific heat, the change in U is just specific heat times a change in T. So I have uh, C times DT. So rearranging this, I can find, I can set DS equal to um, CDT over T. Okay, there's a bit of a typo there that should just be a T uh, on, the, on the denominator, not a DT. Okay, doing that integral, I get the change in S equals the specific heat times the natural log of T2 over T1. I only use this when I have incompressible substance, solid, liquid, and I have specific heat value. Again, if I have a table, you should use the table. Okay. Um, but if you don't have a table, this is the next best way. Now, for an ideal gas, okay, unlike energy and enthalpy, um, the entropy depends on temperature as well as pressure. So for that reason, our tables give this value that we call S naught or S to the zero or something like that, okay? And it's related just to temperature. And this is essentially the entropy at one atmosphere of pressure, okay? Which means, depending on my pressure, that's not the actual entropy. I have to calculate that knowing those pressures. So I can look up those S naught values from the temperatures. But then if I wanna find the actual change in entropy, I need to use either, um, well, I need to know the, those pressures. So I use this, this natural log. Now this equation, you know, on the left side, that one's for air. On the right side, that's for those other ones when I have things in molar form, okay? But again, you're not looking up the actual entropy. You're looking up this S naught. So you need to use this equation to find the actual change in entropy so that you can, you know, do things as we move you know, trying to, to, to set states and things of that nature. So again, unlike energy, I need, I can look up the entropy in that table, but again, I need to plug that into this equation to find the actual entropy, knowing the S naught values as well as the, the pressures. Okay. Now, if I have constant specific heat, which I don't, usually have. The only time I really have this are helium, neon, argon, that sort of thing. Okay. Uh, I don't have tables for these. Again, if you have tables, use the tables. This is the bottom line of this. Okay. But if I don't have tables and I know I have constant specific heat for a gas, I can use these equations shown here. Okay. Where I relate the entropy to C times the natural log of the, the temperature ratio, just like I did above for the incompressible substance, which I don't have tables for as well. Okay, but again, bottom line, if I have a table, 
use it. For water and refrigerants, look at straight up, okay? If it's uh, an ideal gas, remember you're looking up this S naught, and you have to plug it into this equation to find the actual change in entropy.